All right, guys, example number five. We have an outdoor amphitheater. It's 25,000 seats. Ticket prices are $8, $12, and $20. Number must equal the number of um, the desired return is how many of each type of ticket. All right, so go to the last sentence. And the last sentence says, how many of each type of ticket? Well, I go back into my problem now, and I'm, well, what kind of tickets do we have? Well, we've got the $8 tickets, we've got $12 tickets, we've got $20 tickets. So I'm going to let X be the number of $8 tickets. Y is going to be the number of $12 tickets. And I'm going to let Z be the number of $20 tickets. All right, gang, well, we got three variables. This tells us that we must arrive at three equations. Well, one of these is really easy. This outdoor amphitheater, which consists of $8, $12 tickets, and $20 tickets, is 25000 So, guys, I know that the sum of all of these numbers of tickets has to be 25000 The next thing, it tells me that the money has to be three twenty. So, if I think about the number of $8 tickets I found, I can find the revenue of those by taking 8 times the number I sell. I can get the revenue from the $12 tickets by taking 12 times the number of those that I sell. And I can take the 20 times the number of uh, $20 tickets I sell. And I know that has to be 320000 Now, sometimes a lot of students will say, well, I'm done, but you're not done. Guys, you got three variables, X, Y, and Z, so we must end up with three equations. So we've got to look back at a problem and find another, another relationship. And we see in this sentence right here, the number of tickets priced at $8 must equal the number of tickets priced at $20. So the number of tickets at $8, we've let that be X. That must equal the number of tickets priced at $20, which we've let be Z. Now, a lot of students will say, well, I'm done. Well, you're really not done because we need to put this in a form that leads us nicely into an augmented matrix. So I have X plus Y plus Z equals 25,000. I have 8X plus 12Y plus 20Z equals 320,000. And then this one down here, X's and Z's, I've got to get these in X's and Y's and Z's and numbers. I've got to appreciate, respect, if you will, the column situation. So I've got my X is on the left side of the equal sign, so I can put that there. I don't have any Y's. And when I bring this Z across where it needs to be on the left side of the equal sign, I have negative Z, and I'm going to have nothing left over here. So, gang, my augmented matrix is going to look like 1, 1, 1, 25,000, 8, 12, 20, 320,000, and 1, 0, minus 1, 0. All right, so let's uh, put this in our calculator. Just like before, so I'm just going to choose matrix A. We need a 3 by 4. So I have 1, 1, 1, 25,000. Guys, make sure you get your zeros right. And I need 8, 12, 20, 320,000. 
and the one that usually throws people off, the one, zero, minus one, and zero. All right, let's get out of this. Now, I know somewhere previously I've done that R, R, E, F thing. So I'm going to go second function. It's going to give me that. Well, I don't want that one. Let's see if I did it the line before. Do it again. And there's what I need. So I don't have to go back through all that stuff. So when I get this, I see that my solution tells me what? Well, this first line right here tells me that my X which is the $8 tickets. is 5,000. The second line tells me my Y's, which was my $12 tickets. Was uh, fifth, I need uh, 15,000 $12 tickets and I need 5,000 at the $20 tickets. I wrote all this down over here just, uh, just because that's what I do. All right, so you can see that I've done the solution right here uh, from the, uh, the output on the calculator. And it, it works out right, all right? We need uh, everything to add up to 25,000. So 5,000 plus 15,000 plus 5,000 is 25,000. We need the number of $8 tickets to be the same thing as the number of $20 tickets, which we do, 5,000 each. And you can go ahead and multiply this out. You can go 8 times 5,000, 12 times 15,000, and 20 times 5,000. You'll see you get 320,000 uh, as the total revenue. All right. I don't care what you say. That is the easiest way to do that problem. All right, gang. Um, I'm learning here now. You should learn a little bit. And what should we do first? Go to the last sentence. How many ounces of cottage cheese and yogurt. All right, so I'm gonna let X be the ounces of cottage cheese. I'm gonna let Y be the ounces of yogurt. You can almost always go to the last sentence because that's the way questions are posed gives you all your information and then it'll come in and say, you know, how many of whatever you're looking for. It makes sense that the variables that we solve for coincide with what's being asked in the question. That's just good old common sense in my opinion. Now we got to look into the problem and see what, what kind of relationships we have, okay? Well, we can see that each ounce of cottage cheese has protein and calcium. Each ounce of yogurt has protein and calcium. And then down here, we have a total for protein and calcium. So I'm going to have a protein equation. And I know I'm going to have a calcium equation. So I'm going to circle these. I have three protein. And one protein. has to be my total protein. Apples plus apples are apples. Oranges plus oranges are oranges. Protein plus protein is protein. I have 16 milligrams of calcium, 41 milligrams of calcium, has to be my total amount of calcium. Augmented matrix, Grab your calculator. Gang, what uh, size do we need here? We need a tube of three. Three, one. If I'm going too fast for you, pause me. Take still shots. Just don't indict me on anything. All right, gang, we got it. Quit. I'm just going to use what I did before. That's what I need. 
So I see right now that I need 16.65 ounces of cottage cheese. And I need 12.04 ounces of yogurt. Now, I, I have to tell you, when something turns out like this and it's not a nice answer, like 16 or 12, I am tempted to check out my work uh, because I just want to make sure that I've, uh, I've done everything correctly here. So the first thing I'm going to look at is I'm going to come in and look at my matrix A and just make sure I typed everything in correctly. So I can access my matrix A and I see that I had 3162 and I had 1641760 which corresponds to what I had uh, uh, right there. Okay. Now I want to make sure I didn't make a mistake in creating this. So I needed 3 and 1 and 62. I need the 1641 and 760, which I have. So guys, even though it didn't turn out right, I feel good about this answer. Uh, I've added, you know, protein plus protein to get protein, calcium plus calcium to get calcium. Uh, I have my columns equal to cottage cheese, which I need. I've got this column equal to my yogurt, which I need. Guys, I trust that final answer. All right, gang, this one looks like something we did before, right? Um, cost function, we're given fixed costs and variable costs. So, guys, that is really easy. So, we have um, 24,000 plus 7.45Q. Uh, we sell these things at 1995. Guys, I don't know why, but so many students I've seen in the past want to do that right there. And that's just wrong. I mean, if you wake up tomorrow and you want to do math wrong, do this. You'll get it all wrong. Uh, the revenue is a function of the quantity. And if you don't have a variable here, you have no quantity. That's just telling you whatever quantity you have produced, the revenue is always going to be 19.95. Well, guys, that's not what we have. We have a Q there because for each additional unit we sell, we get $19.95 uh, more. So, again, what did I do before that worked? Think about these as Y. So, I didn't leave myself much room to write, so I'm going to come down here. So, we get Y equals, uh, and I'm going to put my... Um, Guys, that stuff ain't gonna work. You gotta have structure. You gotta have this uh, the the variables on one side, uh, the, uh, the 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 numbers without the variables in another. Now I'm gonna set it up where I put my cues first here, and that's perfectly fine. So this is gonna be minus seven point four five Q plus Y equals twenty four thousand. And I'm going to go minus 19.95Q plus Y equals 0. So, gang, my augmented matrix is going to look like minus 7.45, 1, 24,000, minus 19.95, 1, 0. Let's put that in our calculator. Ah. Again, I'm just going to use A. Need a 2 by 3, so this is minus 7.45. And all that's going to happen here uh, is our interpretation of our values are going to be flipped. All right, does everything look good? No typos? All right, because we can all make typos. I don't care who you are. So I want to quit that.
Uh, I want to go back. Uh, I need to go further than that, so I hit it again. And I see I did this. Numbers have been changed, so it's going to be cool. So, guys, what we got here is the following. I'm going to write this down. All right. So when I come back over here, here's what I've got down at the bottom. Well, this is telling me that whatever variable I have in the first column, and notice that I set up the Qs here, right? So this is telling me that when my quantity is 1920, that my Ys is 38,304. But guys, I set my Ys up to be my revenue and my cost. So guys, that tells me that's my break even. That tells me when I sell 1920 quantity that my revenue and my cost, definition of break even, is $38,304. All right, let's see if we learned anything from previous stuff. Uh, in a local California election, uh, a public relations firm promoted this candidate three ways, phone calls, house visits, and letters. We get a cost per contact, and we have it in two cities. All right? Does MN exist? Well, M is a three by one, and N is a two by three. That has nothing to do. Nope. Not even consideration. Not even close. Uh, does does that um, uh, exist? All right. Does N M? Well, N is a two by three. Uh, M is a three by one. So it does exist. But is it meaningful? Well, let's examine the structure, okay? We have a 2 by 3. Berkeley, Oakland. Telephone. House visit. Letter. This over here is a 3 by 1. Telephone. House visit. Letter. Cost. Not only is there three of these and three of these, they mean the same thing. Our resulting matrix is going to be a two by one. It's going to get its rows from the first matrix, Berkeley, Oakland, and it's going to get its value for the column from the second matrix. So guys, when we multiply this out, and I'm not going to do it just to save time, it's going to give us the total cost for Berkeley and for Oakland. The interpretation is also meaningful because the columns not only are the same as the rows, the columns on the first matrix and the rows on the second matrix, but they actually measure uh, the same thing. And I, I, you know what? I, I want to be thorough here. If you want to fast forward, you can. Uh, I want to um, I want to be thorough here and go ahead and uh, and, and and do that just uh, just just because I need to. All right, so uh, guys, uh, first matrix. I'm gonna let that be um, uh, the uh, uh, the end matrix. So we need a two by three, which is what we got. So fifteen, uh, ten, and five. And 5, 10, and 15. Okay, so let's quit. Go back in to matrix. Uh, let's go over and set up the second matrix, B. So, gang, here we need, what, a 3 by 1? 
four twenty and three. All right, boys and girls, let's uh, matrix A times matrix B. So guys, your total money spent uh, in Berkeley for the total of telephone, house visits, and letters, $275. The total amount spent in Oakland was $265. Um, all right, um, well, this is interesting, um, you know, did I just do something silly? Um, Um, I don't really see a reason to work this problem again because we just worked it. Uh, see, previously, um, I think we can work that one, can't we? Yeah, we just we just worked it. Uh, that's kind of weird. Um, all right, a uh, couple of harder problems. Uh, no, I mean, not really harder, just, 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 you know, something else going on here. Uh, this one, this one's kind of hard. What, if, if, if you had 3x plus 1 equal 4, what would you do? You'd start here, would you? You wouldn't start with the, the, the term that has the variable, you'd start with this and move it over here. Well, guys, that kind of makes sense here. One, two, one, one. X1, X2. And when I move this over here, I'll go nine minus three. And nine minus four to be five. What's going to happen next? Well, from the previous video, we saw that we would multiply 1, 2, 1, 1 times its inverse. And we would have to multiply on the left over here because matrices are not commutative, as I discussed ad nauseum before. What happens right here when you multiply a matrix times its inverse? Essentially, you get 1. So this tells me that x1, x2 can be found by taking 1, 2, 1, 1 inverse times 6, 5. Because I'm going to let this be my A, I'm going to set this up as my B. So let's go do it. So gang, uh, A needs to be a uh, 2 by 2. So one, two, one, one. Guys, uh, all uh, square matrices don't uh, have inverses, but uh, the ones we encounter will have. And let's go get matrix uh, B and set it up. Uh, matrix B needs to be a two by one. So it's going to be a six and a five. All right, guys, so what we need to do here is we need to go matrix A, inverse, times matrix B. So the answer would be 4, 1. All right, now this is a little harder, a lot harder. Uh, let's, uh, let's see what's going on here. Now what's, this is more challenging, so this actually makes you think not about multiplying matrices with your calculator, 
but how do you actually multiply these things uh, using the linear combination? We talked about, uh, uh, I think, a couple of videos again. So it says find a squared. So I know that a squared is a times a, which in this problem is a b times b squared minus a squared minus a b. Now if you're one of those uh, students like me, you probably want to try this before you see it to see if you can get it done. Uh, if you're probably the A students. So just, just pause the video and see if you could figure this out. And then once you think you've got it, come back and then you could play the rest of the video and see uh, what happens. Well, first of all, keep in mind that you have a 2 by 2 so, you know, for obvious reasons, uh, we can definitely uh, multiply these things. And the product matrix is going to be a 2 by 2. Now, how do we get, this is row 1. This is row two, this is column one, this is column two. How do we get this right here? We take a linear combination of row one from the first matrix with column one of the second matrix. So we're going to take AB times AB plus B squared times negative A squared. What happens here? Row 1, column 2. So row 1, column 2. AB times B squared plus B squared times negative AB Alright, I've got a phone call coming in. Uh, I don't know who that is. Uh, so, um, Let's see, so that's going to be a negative AB cubed. All right, this is going to take row 2, column 1, so I'm focusing on row 2, column 1. So I got negative A squared times AB. And then I take row 2 times column 1. So I'm going to have plus a cubed b. The next thing I get is row 2, column 2. So I have row 2, column 2. So I have negative a squared b squared. And then I have negative ab times negative ab, which is positive a squared b squared. So gang, what does this uh, turn out to be? Uh, a squared b squared minus a squared b squared is zero. a b cubed minus a b cubed is zero. a cubed b minus a cubed b plus a cubed b is zero. And minus a squared b squared plus a squared b squared is zero. The guy, it turns out, that regardless what your a b is, if it's in this form right here, it's going to give you an a squared that is zero. So let's just choose something randomly. Let's say a is uh, 3 and b is 5. So a times b would be 15. b squared would be 25. Negative a squared would be negative 9. And negative a times b would be negative 15. So let's put that into our calculator. So it's a 2 by 2, so we're set. So I want a 15, a 25, a negative 9, and a negative 15. So guys, for any A and B we choose, 
when we take matrix A and square it, we're going to get 0, 0. Guys, nothing holy about 3 and 5. Uh, this 3 and 5 that I chose, uh, it didn't matter uh, what A and B I chose. I could have chosen A equals negative 2 thirds and B equals positive 1 seventh. Doesn't matter. A times B. B squared. Negative A squared. Negative AB. Square that. Zero, zero, zero. Guys, that's all I got for you.